Welcome back. Now we're going to talk about fruit pies. I'm going to show you how to make a really simple lattice top for your fruit pie, and then I'm going to show you how to make a big cobbler, enough to feed the whole family. I want to show you how to make one of my favorite pies, strawberry rhubarb pie. Now you know what strawberries are, but you may not be as familiar with rhubarb. And rhubarb is so beloved in pies that, particularly in the South, it's known as pie plant. It's a sign of spring, and so back in the country, and especially up in mountain areas where I'm from in North Carolina, it's one of the signs of spring, and people would have a patch that grows in the back in the garden area, and they'd go out and gather that rhubarb in and start making strawberry rhubarb pies, maybe in May. And you'll find it more and more in supermarket produce sections and specialty produce sections. And while it's a spring plant, um, I'm, I'm seeing it all year round now. And it looks a lot like celery, looks a lot more like a vegetable. And I think we're used to it being sort of, um, if, if people have seen it, they expect it to be bright red like this piece. And that's wonderful when it's red, but it's also green looking a lot more like celery. And any kind that you have will have the same taste and be wonderful in a pie. So while, when I go to the store and I see all red ones, that's what I grab. But if it's green, that's all right. It's still going to be a wonderful pie. And that's one reason to mix it with strawberries, because when you do a combination of strawberries and rhubarb, you're going to have the tanginess and um, an interesting texture of rhubarb along with the gorgeous redness and sweetness of strawberries. And the two together give you a sweet and tangy pie that is just fantastic. Um, now before you put it in the pie, you want to trim it up. So I usually cut off uh, both ends. And then I want to get pieces that are about maybe a half an inch thick. So I'm going to slice it lengthwise and then just cross cut it. I usually try to get like four pieces together and then I'm just going to go across. And I want sort of basically something in the half an inch to an inch size and it is going to cook down a lot. Right now it has this sharp texture just like apples but more so than apples it's just it's really going to cook down almost um, almost to a, to a good mush. So um, get those uh, small pieces. If it's a time of year or you're in a place where you can't find rhubarb, it is something that I'm seeing frozen now. So you can make this any time of year with frozen strawberries and frozen rhubarb. So let's set these aside. I've got everything that I need and I want to put this all together. I'm going to start with sugar and a little bit of flour. In a fruit pie, you're always adding some kind of thickener. It might be flour, might be cornstarch, tapioca starch, arrowroot, um, you can use most any of these flowers that, uh, because that's going to make the juices that come out of the berries naturally or whatever fruit that you're using, it's going to make them thicken up and be that wonderful texture that we love to see in a fruit pie. Okay, so again, I'm mixing in the flour so that it will um, uh, dissolve and not be in floury lumps, which would not be fun in the filling. And I've also got a little bit of salt and I've got a tiny bit of cinnamon. If you like spices, you could add more spices to any fruit pie. I usually like cinnamon, nutmeg. I'm very fond of allspice. Just use whatever you got. This is the kind of thing that can kind of make it your signature. Okay, got all those in, and I'm going to add my chopped up strawberries. The strawberries can be big. You see how the rhubarb is small, but the strawberries are going to cook down. Um, you don't have to have them too small. And you could slice them, but I like to, them to be in chunks because I like it to all kind of be a wonderful, uneven, ruby-colored goodness. Okay, let's mix all this up. And all I want to do here is mix the strawberries through so that you'll have lots of good redness and lots of uh, flavor combinations. I'm going to add just a little bit of lemon juice that's going to bring out the tanginess of the um, rhubarb and it's going to balance the sugar. You want to have enough sugar to make a good syrup. And there we go. It doesn't look red now, but you're going to see it turn red later. All right, that's my strawberry rhubarb filling. You do pretty much exactly the same thing for, say, an apple pie, just chunks of apple, chunks of pear. Most any fruit pie starts this way. I'm going to save my butter. I'm going to uh, clear this off, and then I'm going to have a um, pastry pie shell. I'm going to put the fruit in, put the butter on, and show you how to make a really easy lattice top. Now I want to show you how to put this strawberry rhubarb pie together. So I've got my filling the rhubarb and the strawberries tossed with sugar and, oh, it needs a little bit of mixing there, sugar and flour and a little bit of salt and a tiny bit of lemon juice to, to kind of keep that sweet and tangy thing going. And I'm going to scrape all that in, getting every yummy syrupy bit. You know how strawberries give off that good strawberry sauce when they get a little sugar on them. Get all that goodness in there. 
and then I want to spread this out pretty evenly. Almost looks like a vegetable salad here, but it's going to, this is definitely going to be a dessert. Okay, so done with that. Now I've got, oh, I want to go ahead and put my butter on so I don't forget. I've got tiny tidbits of butter. It's gotten a little bit of so, a little bit soft, so I'm using a spoon um, to kind of spread that around fairly evenly. Old time, uh, old time recipes would say dot with butter. I love that. And I think, uh, I think grandma used to probably just pick it up and pinch it as they say, but I like to cut it in little tidbits. Okay, so that's ready to go. You can't let that go to waste. That's still perfectly good. Okay, now I've got a round of uh, butter pie crust. Now I've had this uh, circle of pie crust dough that's all rolled out in the freezer for a few minutes because I wanted it to be really sturdy and super cold so that I can cut it in uh, strips and you know not have it fall apart on me. If you're working with it and it's too soft and it tears, just stick it in the fridge. Remember, cold is your friend with pastry from the butter or fat, uh, butter shortening or um, lard that you're putting into the crust. Having everything cold is gonna be helpful to you. Okay, so I'm going to just cut this into strips. I want it to be, oh, maybe about half an inch to an inch wide. And if you want to be precise, of course, you can get a ruler and you can mark it. But I'm pretty good with eyeballing it here. And I've got enough pastry for, so if I were making a double crust pie, I would have just set this on the top and crimped the edges. If you're doing a lattice, of course, you're not going to need quite as much. Uh, but I do start with a whole, you know, with a whole circle of pie crust. Okay, that one got too skinny. Got to focus here. Okay, I think that's going to be about as many as I need. And, of course, you're going to need different lengths. Okay. Done with my knife. And let's bring my pie up here. All right, so I'm going to take a nice long one and put it across the center. And I'm going to dip it down on the sides and just kind of press it in. And then I'm going to do another one beside it. Okay, this one is fatter. That's all right. This one is skinnier. And I want a real thin one here for this last little bit. And of course, you, you may want to leave more pie exposed. I, I like crust, so I like to kind of just make it sort of a peekaboo look. But it's your lattice top. You do it the way you like. Okay, coming back on this side and this one. Now, if you want to make a proper lattice, you can look out there. There's plenty of uh, direction on how to do that. And that involves folding and bending and going um, in a process that gives you a really beautiful result. But I just love that checkerboard look. So what I do is I go one direction and then I go the other direction. And you could do it in squares if you want to do tic-tac-toe style, or you can go on a diagonal and get kind of a diamond thing going. And I'm just, pre well, that one, now this one is short, so this one won't work here. I'm just going to move it over to the side, and that's plenty of room for this side one. I need a longer one, my longer pieces for the middle. I've got to stretch further. And oops, that's too short. That one's perfect, just about. And remember, I told you I'd have some left over. So these, and of course, this doesn't get thrown away. This is pie crust gold. You're always going to have little bits of dough. Keep them together. When you have three of those, you got a new pie crust. So don't let it go to waste. Okay, I want to come back, and first I'm going to press to make sure that the new top that we've put on is going to be nicely attached. Bringing that around, just pressing. Some, sometimes it says you need to add water. You don't really need water to keep it there. Okay, and I'm just going to kind of pinch off the extra parts, I want to come just up to the top, just up to the edge. I'm adding more to my dough collection already. That one's a little bit over. That one's a little bit over. So I'm going to come around and I'm going to fold in all around the top edge. And of course the parts where, where there's a strip is going to be a little bit thicker. And that's all right. There's going to be lots of good strawberry rhubarb juice to make every bit of crust, the thick and the thin, taste wonderful. And some people like the filling and some people like the crust. Some people like all of it. Okay, so that's got, now I've got a nice rounded edge. I could do the pinching thing, I could do a knuckle thing, but my very favorite is of course the way that my grandmother did it, which is the tines of a fork. I just find that so old time, charming 
And I don't think they did it because it was pretty. I think they did it because it sealed up the pie. But I just love that effect. So I just come around the edge. And this is something, whoops, I want to smooth that in. It was sticking up a little bit unevenly, so I want to go back and set that up again. Okay, coming around the side. And of course, this pie crust dough, it right now is so cold, so it's really, really easy to work with it. Sometimes if it's really warm, the fork will actually stick. If that happens, put it in the fridge, come back out. But working, it's working all the way around the edge till I'm back where I started from, a little bit there. Beautiful. Okay, strawberry rhubarb pie, lattice top, ready to go in the oven. I'm going to put it in at 425 for 15 minutes to get it a, to get the the all those berries in there bubbling away, and then it's going to go for another 45 minutes or so at 350. So you start it off high, then bring it down low, and I can't wait to show you how pretty it is when it's done. This is one of the most delightful treats of summer is to have fresh peaches and turn them into a peach cobbler. And the first thing we want to do is get that fuzzy skin off the peaches. And to do so, I like to blanch them, traditional way. I've got wildly boiling water here and I've dropped the peaches down into the water and uh, let them go for, depends on how ripe they are. If they're very ripe, they'll just need a minute. If they're sort of green and underripe, um, you can still make a great cobbler out of them, but they may need two or three minutes. You just want to test it. I'm going to take them out of the boiling water and let them cool. I'm going to put them in ice water so that they cool down quickly, which means I can touch them. It also stops them from doing any cooking. And I want to show you, before we put them in, I cut, them, uh, cut an X on the bottom, and that makes it easy to peel them. See how easily the peeling just comes rolling right off? I, I have a paring knife out here in case I needed it, but I don't even really need it. These are just perfectly done here. And if you start doing this and you're just getting little bits and pieces and it's frustrating, oop, it just got hot. Put it back in the cold water if it gets too hot to hold in your hands. And if, it, if it's hard to pull or um, cut the skin off with your knife, just put it back in the boiling water for another, uh, for, for a minute or two. Just kind of let them tell you uh, how much it's going to take to get that skin off. You could just take a knife and peel them the way that you peel an apple, but you lose so much peach when you do that. So um, if this isn't too fussy, Try it. If you want to just leave the skin on, you can do that too. More fiber. Okay, then in order to get the, uh, the peach off of the pit, now these are freestone peaches and you can see it practically falls apart. You know how when you cut into a peach and the, uh, the, the, um, the seed is embedded in the inside. I like to go around and do four cuts and then you're just trying to pull off a quarter at a time. And even if this peach weren't as easy to work with as it is, that would get all the pieces off. And then once I get them, I, I want to cut them sort of, you can leave big pieces like that. You can cut it small. You know, once you've got them blanched, it's fine. So you just want to chop those up into um, just whatever size that you want to work with. And I've already got some all ready to go here. And let me show you how, how we put this cobbler together. Now, here I've got the peaches that, are ch that I've blanched and I've peeled and I've chopped. And then I've, as we do on fruit pies, I made a mixture of sugar and a little bit of flour. You could also use cornstarch or arrowroot or um, tapioca, something to thicken it. And a little bit of salt. And in this peach cobbler, I've put cinnamon and nutmeg. You could use cloves. You could use allspice. You could use all cinnamon. You could use no spices. It's your cobbler. Um, but nutmeg and cinnamon are really traditional with, uh, with a peach pie and with a peach cobbler. Now, what is a cobbler? A cobbler is simply a great big pie that serves a lot of people. And I want to get my pastry dough rolled out. Don't need my ice water anymore. I would save that and put it on the garden. And I've got some pie crust that's nicely chilled. And I'm using a big 13 by 9 inch pan. I've got a nice uh, oven proof glass one to work with. And I love to bake in pans like this because I can see the browning. I can really kind of tell what's happening. But you could also, you could use a metal baking pan, anything that size, an oval one. What you want is just lots of area. And remember that we're going, when we're rolling out pie crust, you want to start in the middle and go out. So middle and out, middle and back, middle to the side, middle and over, and then turn it. And up and back and over and over and kind of a quarter turn each time, get that one out of the way. This is one round, this is enough for one, uh, 
one round pie. So usually I need about a, say one and a half to fill the cobbler. And of course in this case, I'm not trying to be round, I'm trying to go rectangular. And this pie crust is nice and cold. This is a butter crust that, uh, that I made and it got nice and cold in the fridge. Set it out for about oh, 30 minutes or so at least um, so that it's not too hard to roll out. And I'm not using flour just because I've got this good, um, this good surface to roll on and the texture of this pie crust is just right, which can be a matter of kind of how the weather is and how your flour is going and whether you added, you know, just the right amount of water. I don't need flour, but if it were sticking, I'd just dust the area with flour and uh, that would be fine. Adding a little flour is not a problem. Okay. And as I said, if you were using ready-made pie crust, you just want to, it's like you're, fitting, it's like you're make, making a dress and it's a pattern. So you're just cutting out, shaping, and pressing things together. And you want to pick it up and move it around. Because the bad thing would be to have it the perfect size and shape and then you can't get it up off the board. Okay, so I'm moving up. Go a little bit more that way. And I'm not worried because if it's not exactly the right size, I'm just going to patch. Just always patching and mixing and matching. And here's a great place for you to use those tidbits of dough. You know, when you are making pie crust and you have extra bits, just keep those all together and you can use them to fill out a shape. And I gotta look at my goal here. Okay, I've got enough for the base, but I need more for the sides. So, set that one over and get this one going. This one is kind of a rectangle, up and down and over. You can, I'm doing a peach cobbler here. Other cobblers that I adore are blackberry. This, we've got a couple of blackberries in this one just to kind of accentuate the a summer theme. Nothing is more summery than peaches and blackberries together. You can make a strawberry cobbler. You can make an apple cobbler. You can make a uh, blueberry. Blueberry and peach is another favorite. Um, a cobbler, now let's talk about cobbler. There are people who say that a cobbler is wonderful fruit like this, baked in a pan with biscuit dough on top. And you know what? They're right, that's one kind of cobbler. And people who say that's a cobbler often refer to the fact that cobbler means it looks like cobblestones. So you've got biscuit dough on top and that looks like a cobblestone street. And that may very well be right. But cobble also means to put together a lot of things uh, to make one thing. So you cobble together uh, the pieces of something to make a whole thing. So a cobbler could be, I've got this fruit and that fruit, and I cobble it all together and make a pie. So where I grew up, a cobbler was really just a lined, bigger dish. And I think the point of it is to just have pie for 25 or 30 people and not for five or 10 people. And taking one great big uh, cobbler to something like the family reunion, it's easier to serve. You serve it in big spoonfuls, out in bowls. Easy to put ice cream on it. Whereas a pie, I'm cutting it into these nice pieces. It kind of says that you need a plate. And it's harder to put ice cream on it. Okay, let's see if we can fit these in here. This one is nice and thick. Okay, and I want it to come up all the way up the sides. You know what, I'm just going to make that corner work right there. It's a little low here. Now once I get the main part of it in, I don't want to take the whole thing out. I want to patch and work with where I am. So I'm smoothing out those parts. I'm going to add, get this corner going. And then I want to smooth that out a little bit. And I want to build up this side. I've got, still got my knife. Let's see what I can do here. I just think this is so much fun. You're just piecing and patching. Can you imagine how much fun this would be if you've got a little person who likes to help in the kitchen? This is just, you know, it's an adventure. How are we going to make this work? How are we going to fit it all in? And rolling out dough. The thing with kids is kids do want to put the dough down and just roll like crazy. But you know what? They can do that until you get this part ready. And then you can have them help with this, which actually needs some patience and some creativity. Okay, I've just got two more sections. And if I don't need all of this, I can just freeze it. I wouldn't even, I might just leave it like that. And I could make, 
I could make little fried pies, or I could save that to piece together with something else. Okay, I want to be all the way up the sides. Just need another strip on this end, and then I'm going to be ready to fill it. I think that's going to make it go. Okay, beautiful. Now it's not, is it even? No. Are there any holes? We're good to go. It doesn't have to be even. That's, oh, that's a little bit thin there. Okay. Now I'm going to put in my, see how much juice the peaches are giving off already? Yum. And it makes a wonderful, luscious sound going in. I can't believe the color. Can you see the color of this juice? It's just so rosy. That's just the liquid that's coming off the peaches from, haven't even been cooked yet. So this is going to be one delicious cobbler. Okay, I'm evening that out, spreading it all around. I'm going to be about the same height. And then I'm going to christen it with two things, blackberries. Now, this doesn't look like many blackberries. Seems like we're being unfair to the blackberries. But you are going to be amazed at how much the blackberries sh show their color. So this is going to be a peach cobbler, more peaches than blackberries, but it's going to have an incredible rosy color. Um, it's just such a treat. You could use all blackberries. I love blackberries and strawberries together. There's kind of just more wonderful combinations than you can think of. And of course, one that I just discovered in the last few years is a sweet potato cobbler. And you cook sweet potatoes, you parboil them so they're still sort of firm, and then layer them in and put in uh, the flour and the sugar and the spices, and then you've got a chunky sweet potato pie. Heavenly, very old school. And scattering on butter. I probably don't need all of this. Let's just give a good, uh, good baptism. I think that'll work. And let's set that out. And I've already got my cover rolled out here, my topper. Now, this would be perfect to do a lattice top. You could do it straight back and forth checkerboard. You could do it on an angle. But my favorite old school kind is a double crust cobbler. So it's just like a double crust pie. Since I'm a fool for crust with uh, yummy juices on it, this is my favorite. You know what? Since I've got this on the wonderful paper, I don't even need to try to lift it up. Rolled it out on parchment paper. You could use wax paper. Or remember, you could roll it out and then fold it up into quarters. Or you could put it on, a roll, on the rolling pin. Whatever you do to move it. And if you move it and it tears, take it back over, patch it up. All is forgiven once it goes in the oven and bakes. And it's going to do... It's wonderful job. I've got plenty. I've got, I've got enough to cover another pie here. Okay, so I'm going to come around the sides and just trim it off so that I'm right around the top of my dish. And all these scraps, doesn't hurt to roll them out again. That's a wonderful thing. Unlike if you had biscuit dough or cookies, eh, you might worry about it getting tough. But this will relax and still come back and make a wonderful pie later on. Just, I, I like to keep it in the freezer. The fridge is okay, but I'll forget it's there. If it's in the freezer, I've bought a lot of time. Okay, so now I'm going to press the sides. I'm going to go down, try to reach down and make sure that the crust is kind of tucked in at the level of the fruit all along the way. And then I've got a little more crust than I want. I think I'm going to trim this just a little bit more. This is going to give off so much juice. There is no law that you have to serve this with ice cream, but it's awfully wonderful. And there is nothing like homemade ice cream on a hot summer night, big old peach cobbler, served in bowls, eaten with a spoon. Delicious. Can you buy frozen peaches? Yes, you can. Can you buy frozen blackberries? Yes, you can. But really, this is, this is really just the recipe for fruit pie. And what I'd love to have all of you do is go out there and get some pie crust and peel and chop up some apples and mix them with a lot of sugar, a little bit of flour, a little bit of spices, toss them together, put the lid on, and bake it till it's done. And make something without even a recipe. And I, th I think for people to just up and make an apple pie, just using that sort of combination, I think that makes you feel like, you know, I can really cook. Because it seems like it's hard, but it's just a couple of steps. So you could make that your project and send it to me. Show me what you do. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna fold it. Now I wanna make sure that it's tightly sealed. So I'm gonna go around and fold it down. You could also fold it under, but I find it easier to 
fold forward. And the, and the corners of this, are, of course, are going to be very crusty. So for people who really love their pie crust, you know, just like the person who wants the corner of a cake with all that icing, you want to make sure they get a corner piece because they'll get extra, extra crust. And there will be plenty of juice with this. OK, so kinds of cobbler. So this is the kind of cobbler that I grew up with, which is just a gigantic deep dish, double crust, fruit or sweet potato pie. Then there's a fruit mixture just like this with biscuit dough topping, maybe with a little bit of sugar in the, in the biscuits, but basically a biscuit topping. Then there is so what, I, what I, I call a modern cobbler, where you make a batter. And you have, sh uh, just like what you'd have for a cake, you have eggs and sugar and flour and melted butter, and you make a batter. And a lot of times you'll put the batter in, say, a square baking dish and sprinkle fruit on top. And then the batter cooks up through the top, and there's fruit and cake mixed together. And that's wonderful. And that's another cobbler. So any way that you want to go, if you come to my house and say, this is what I call a cobbler, I'm going to say, come on in. I'll get the ice cream. But this is a North Carolina style, old school peach cobbler. Now, before this goes in the oven, it's very important that you make sure that the wonderful juices have somewhere to go. So you want to poke little holes. And I just first like to go around and make sure that there's going to be lots of juice escape hatches all the way around. My grandmother used to do this with a fork, so hers would have little round bits. Then I usually do a letter. So I'm going to do a P for peach, and then I'm going to do a B for blackberry. And of course, this doesn't show up very much now. It'll show up a little bit better when the juices come out, although it'll still be confusing. And of course, when people see it, they may say, PB, is that a peanut butter cobbler? And you can say, well, you'll just have to wait and see. You'll have to have some. Uh, and when they taste it, they'll know it's not peanut butter. Oh, I want to finish this off. I want to make this a little bit prettier. I could do uh, the upside down fork. But I think for this one, I want to get just sort of a little bit of a pinch. And if you want to get fancy, you can cut out little hearts. You can cut out stars. You can even just cut out little tiny circles. Put a little bit of milk on the bottom of them and press them. People put cut out app, um, you know, uh, the shape of leaves or something. And you know, just look in the food magazines, and you can get all kinds of uh, ideas of ways to make things prettier. Uh, I kind of tend to go for an old time, simple way because that way I don't forget. But whatever you do, it's going to be a wonderful dessert. OK, that is our peach and blackberry cobbler. And it's ready to go in the oven. And I can't wait for you to see what it looks like when it comes out. It's going to go in at 425 for 15 minutes to get started. And I'm going to cut it down to 350, and it'll go. This will probably take an hour, because there's so much going on in there. And the nice thing is, you've got a, if you've got a glass pan, you can see that you know, everything's browning evenly. But it's going to be worth waiting for. And I can't wait to show it to you. We'll be back. And here you have it, bubbling hot from the oven, peach and blackberry cobbler. See how I told you the blackberries would really sort of show up in color, but don't worry, the peaches are still in there. And this is strawberry rhubarb, and they're both just heavenly. Because this is so hot, it's too hot to serve. You want The ideal for a cobbler to me is warm, so that it'll just melt the ice cream. And this is good warm or at room temperature. Two gorgeous fruit pies. If you can make this fruit pie and that fruit cobbler, you can use most any fruit in any combination and come out with a wonderful dish. All right, we're going to let these cool, and then we're going to enjoy them. In our next lesson, we're going to talk about one of my favorites. OK, they're all my favorites. But I truly love meringue pies. We're going to show how to make a beautiful meringue on a butterscotch pie.